Hey guys, hey, what's going on? Oh my god, my opening sequence is terrible looking, but that's okay. I'm here, I'm on time, I'm doing all that stuff I'm supposed to be doing. All right, fine, I'm two minutes late, but you're gonna kill me for two minutes? That's all I gotta ask on that. I hope the music ain't too loud, but we'll see how the rest of that stuff is going. How you guys doing today? I am Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer, and welcome back to Bust a Recap, the show where we give a recap and relative reviews of shows on various streaming services that, well, we got the time to watch. Now, for those of you guys that are like, hey, do The Mandalorian, do this, do that, um, working on that kind of thing, but it's really tough when you're doing this by yourself. This is like more than a full-time job. And I can tell you from personal experience that with this being a full-time job, ah, there's not a whole lot of time to catch up on a lot of stuff. So I'm dealing with stuff that a lot of people are dealing with and stuff that a lot of people aren't dealing with. So on this show, at least for the next, oh, 10, 13, let's call it this season, we're going to be focusing primarily on Lost in Space Season 2 and Harley Quinn on the DC Universe app. Now, for those of you guys that are out there that actually don't really, oh, God, I got a predator in here. Hang on just a minute here because I never remember to silence my phone. Anyway, um... Yeah, for those of you guys that are new, this is what we do. We've been doing this show for a few years. I occasionally have co-hosts um, and guests and all that stuff in. But I do tend to do this on weekdays because I have a work schedule just like the rest of everyone else. It's just my work schedule is a little bit backwards. So thank you guys. Strap in because we're going to be talking about some serious sci-fi action adventure, which is kind of fun. And... Um, you know, I'm hoping to get you guys out there to participate in the conversations. But before we do that, I got to get down to a little bit of business, which means if you guys want to talk to us and say, hey, what's going on? What's up? How you guys doing? All that jazz. Just send me an email. Pull up your keyboard and open up your email and send it to back in the deck at gmail.com. That's B-A-C-K-I-N-T-H-E-D-E-C-K at symbol because it's not an ampersand but the at symbol gmail.com you can also hit us up on our social media and all that stuff um as you guys can tell we got a whole bunch of things we got you know the instagram and the twitter and oh look at all those things we got and all that stuff follow us on the youtube um you can find us youtube at bidp just uh subscribe to us hit the notification bell do all that jazz so that we can well how can i put this so that we can start building up followers get the word out there and all that stuff um and if you guys don't like looking at my beautiful face that's right i said beautiful beautiful and bountiful face that's fine just head on over to soundcloud.com slash bid underscore p and you guys can listen to our shows as we record them or should i say a little bit after we record them and all that stuff and finally hit us up on patreon you know that would really really help us out with all that stuff um and when i say help us out it helps me pay for this stuff and helps us really get the rest of this stuff out there we have tiers starting at one dollar and hang on hang on Oh, ending at 100. That's right. So if you guys are just able to afford to be Deckers and all that stuff, ain't no shame in that game. Ain't no shame whatsoever in that particular game. What I can tell you is very simply, a um, dollar a month is what we're asking for. And that gives you polls and Patreon only content and early access and all that, ja and all that jazz. And um, you can also... You know, just go on up if you want to get a card like one of our queens, Shannon Boomlay, and our and our number one ace right now, the first ace at $100 a month or more. That would be uh, Jennifer Kroll. And there are rewards. It's all up on the tiers. Just check it out over at patreon.com slash BID underscore P. Help us out in that particular way. And now that I'm done with the business and all that jazz, let's get to talking about 
some of this stuff. Now, I have been loving, and when I say loving, I mean loving, okay? Loving a lot of the stuff that um, Netflix has been putting out. Oh my God, why didn't anybody tell me that my hair was all weird? Um, I've been loving a lot of the stuff that Netflix has been putting out, no lie. But we have been covering Lost in Space because it was one of my favorite shows growing up. I mean, you know, the Swiss Family Robinson specifically starring um, a hyper intelligent kid. And of course, the creepy little finger character of Dr. Smith. And let's face it, we can all deal with a little bit of Dr. Smith. But let's do a tiny bit of a recap. Last season, um, last season, and you guys can check this out on the YouTube playlist of Buster Recap. It's it's right down there. Let me see if I can pull this up for you guys real quick. Do, do, do. There we go. Playlist. Boom, boom. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. Hey, look at all that stuff. Yeah, you guys can just check it out on Ooh boy, boo, 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 cloak and dagger. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff down there, I can say. Um, but yeah, we covered the whole series um, last season. And um, hey, look at all that stuff. Yeah, and this these were our um, <laughs> cloak and dagger stuff. And of course, a lot of our stuff was flagged and blocked in countries and all that other stuff. But we're doing what we can, you know. What can I say? Um, when we left off, last week or last time we covered lost in space we were talking about how it didn't feel much like the old show because it was a whole lot of maroon stuff and it was close to being like lost okay now the premise of the show is there is a family that is literally lost in space because it's the most creative title that they could come up with in the 1950s and <clears throat> it's about their adventures on this strange and unusual planet while they're trying to get home. So it was kind of like Gilligan's Island, but it wasn't meant to be silly, okay? Um, and the first season of the Netflix show um, put them as part of a caravan, and there was, well, the cast of characters in the show was six people. That's it. You had um, Mr. and Mrs. Robinson, Will Robinson, his sister Penny, um, the the mechanic that wasn't actually part of the family in and of itself and of course dr smith now dr smith is the little finger character and back then he was the oh my oh no no please save me oh and i'm forgetting of course my favorite cast member of all of them the wobot <laughs> that's right it wouldn't be a science fiction show if it didn't have high 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 technology and they had the robot you know specifically specifically the robot that you have seen a hundred times and when i say a hundred times this robot is all over um science fiction i mean we are talking like um hang on robot from lost in space yeah there we go robot from the original lost in space i'm just pulling up some images here yeah, there we go. There we go. The B9. That's who we're talking about. Yeah, we're talking about the B9 right here. You can get a little model kit replica of that dude. And you have seen him in the Twilight Zone. You've seen him all over 1950s sci-fi because they could only afford to buy one or two different robots, which was, you know, a thing. It was him and Robbie, the robot. <clears throat> and he is the dude that really, really solidified the phrase, Danger Will Robinson, Danger, Danger Will Robinson. You know, so it was all cool. It was all cool. It was all dandy. Um, and of course, they've upgraded him because it's the 21st century and they've got technology and all that jazz. So when we left them, um, over the course of the show, it was them discovering the robot, making friends with the robot. And of course, and this is a really big one. Um, it was a lot like Lost, like not Lost in Space, but I mean Lost, kind of Lost and Survivor, where there was like, you know, political intrigues, battles for power, um, a cast other than the original six, you know, and it didn't quite feel like Lost in Space, but they did something very interesting because much like the movie, um, you know, much like the movie, what am I looking at? Um, 
excuse me, the movie Gravity with Sandra Bullock, this show turned very quickly into God Hates You All. Every single time they had a moment of respite or like, okay, we've got a plan, we're coming to the end of it, um, the environment would attack them, you know? And sometimes it was their own fault, other times it was just the environment hates them and this is a, this is written in that weekly show format. So not, a, not anything can go good for too long. I'm digging it. It's bomb diggity. It's all that stuff. Um, but at the end of the season, I had some serious hope. And by serious hope, I mean, seriously, seriously, um, what we had going on that in that hope factor <clears throat> was the rest of the colony because it was like I said, it was like Survivor or Lost or a lot of Battlestar Galactica in there where you had like at least 60 people. And that 60 people were doing power struggles and fighting for this and fighting for that and all that jazz. But um, in the season finale, they finally got the ships working. They got everything powered and they did something that was really smart. And that was they got off of the planet they were stuck on at the cost of the Robinson family and the mechanic and Dr. Smith um, being blasted away from the rest of the colony that were on their way to Alpha Centauri. So now it's literally just Swiss Family Robinson in space, which is what the show generally was supposed to be in the first place, which I was hoping for. I was hoping for. Now, in this particular episode, all right, um, we're doing this one episode at a time. Um, this brings us to um, Lost in Space, Season 2, Episode 1. This episode is called Shipwrecked. And um, these guys have landed on a planet. They've lost the robot because of the climax of Season 2. And it's been roughly 11 months since everything was blown away. So we kind of open on the show with the family celebrating Christmas. And this is a really interesting episode in the sense of they're still keeping a little bit of, what is the term I'm looking for? They're trying to keep a little tradition, keep saying and all that stuff. And the family has Christmas, they've set up a greenhouse and a garden and they're really at the end of the day they're just trying to make stuff work that's all they're trying to do they they're just trying to make stuff work yo and um i think it's good i think it's good um because at the end of everything that they're doing they're finally they're kind of settling in but at the same time they're also what is the term i'm looking for um what is the term um they are marooned i mean they're 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 just stuck and they're trying to make the most of it um the drama in this episode uh comes from a couple of places one dr smith is still locked up on the ship and um they're literally on a planet let's see if i can get this to go oh no i can't quite get that to go um they are still locked up on a planet um and unlike a lot of science fiction shows they put them on a planet that didn't allow them to have an atmosphere so every time they go outside they got to um you know they they seriously they got a what is the term i'm looking for um um hang on our um i should have pulled this up earlier but i'm having a few problems here let me see if i can get this thing going so i can pull up a clip or two um yeah this might work and um yeah they are on a planet with zero and i mean that zero atmosphere and i like that a lot i like it a lot i like that they are on a planet with no atmosphere 
And um, uh, you can stop. Thank you. You can you can just stop right there. Cool. Um, yeah, they're on a planet with no atmosphere. And with having no atmosphere, they have to wear their suits at all times. And this is this is big. I mean, this is big. This is good. I like it a lot. Ooh, am I? Yep. I got knocked off. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Ooh. All right. I'm sorry about this. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Again. Ah, uh, this this freaking this freaking thing. This freaking thing. Let me just re-pull this up real quick. Do do do. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Yeah. Again, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that goes on, but yeah, um, one of the things that's there. Oh, okay, that's working. Okay, let me just see if I can do this again properly. L. Oh, there. Okay, so um, as I said, I'm kind of back. I'm kind of not. Um. So yeah, one of the things that they got going in this particular thing hey look at that let me just uh boom 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 yeah so it is christmas time and unfortunately <coughs> with the christmas time being the thing they're kind of and I, and i mean that they're kind of adjusting okay so um they actually have um if you will Oops, yeah. They have, um, they're on a planet, and on that planet, they have no atmosphere, and that is huge. Okay, we have here just a quick clippy whip of, um, them heading outside, you know. Yeah, they still have an airlock because the planet that they land on has absolutely no atmosphere, and I like that they did that kind of thing because, um, if you really think about it, um, so many planets or so many shows that have planets on them do this cute and wonderful thing <laughs> um, concerning like, <clears throat> you know, hey, look, I'm on a different planet. I'm doing the thing and they just use um, the footage of what they got out there. They're like, OK, we're going to film in Malibu. So they're on a beach um, and while they're on a beach they're doing a beach thing you know and it really never occurs to very many people to um think about the atmosphere they got so they got like beautiful beaches and stuff but um hang on t yeah yeah and um there we go yeah, so it doesn't really occur to a lot of people to put humans and stuff on a place where the environment is a big thing. We saw it with the movie Gravity, but not very many, you know. I, I get like in a lot of places they're doing things like tracking class M planets on um on things like oh, let's see here. Um <clears throat> um Star Trek Battlestar Galactica, like whatever there, they always, even when they accidentally land on a planet, it's always somewhere we can breathe. And ain't that fun. Um, the other part, woohoo, yeah, the other part that we're on is quite often um, not a whole lot of time passes. Every episode seems like, okay, this happened today, this happened next time. Sometimes they try and trick us by making it, you know, different within a week all that jazz but on this one um what they ended up doing was very simple they ended up setting us up with time passing they're on a planet that they can't breathe on and when the drama happens because we have the reestablishment, of course of the family unit and everybody's happy and then we've got dr smith still locked up in the brig will is very unhappy with the loss of the robot 
And I get that. I, I completely understand that. Because losing the robot, that sucks. I like the robot. Everybody likes the robot. Um, and they lost the robot because it sacrificed itself to save them at the end of season two. Or at the end of season one. Um, but they're still stuck and they're living essentially on a spaceship on a planet that they can't breathe on. And that's kind of a cool thing. Um, what happens? The answer is logistics. Okay. One of um one of the big heavy things in this one, like there are a lot of good father son moments. Um, like whatever um Mr. Robinson is teaching Will how to drive, and they're using solar panels to collect energy so that they can actually try and get off the planet. So that's kind of cool. Um, but later on, the shelter that they had that they've built up on the ship is running out of power, and on this planet a major typhoon hits like once a month and this one sweeps them away so instead of it being a spaceship they gotta rig up sails and sail the thing like a boat in order to um in order to um in order to survive the next thing that's coming and these guys have gone through it man um the action sequences are incredible and when i say incredible i really I like a lot of the cinematography. I like the action sequences. I like, really like, um, the fact that in the show, the danger, the danger in and of itself is very, very real. Um, as they're, um, hang on, I'm checking a new thing. Um, yeah, when they check to see if they can actually make stuff go, hey that worked um you know they have to raise a sail to sail the ship that's actually um excuse me that's actually stuck on all this water so that became a thing became a real thing and um fortunately the dad pretty much grew up on boats and so they're sailing this makeshift boat and in lost in space fashion they don't just have a problem, okay? First, it's the environment. Second, it's their shelter. Third, while they're sailing, they hit a reef. Fourth, um, another thing happens where they have to sail through a reef. I mean, it, it's just, uh, it's just all out there. It's just all out there. And everything, like nothing goes smoothly for this. And this is why this is such an action adventure show. Now, one of the things that I like about this show as a whole, <clears throat> and it didn't disappoint, is that um, when this show goes, it says we're sci-fi, we're action adventure, and they have just enough jargon to not be regular technology because this is based in the 24th century. And of course, they also have um they also have the action adventure part if if you know what i mean um yeah just making sure okay yeah they have the action adventure part which is very cool i'm a i'm a big fan of the whole action adventure thing um and the adventures that they're on and it's huge it's it's really really huge with um the adventure bits because um hang on i'm hoping i'm really hoping right now that uh -huh, yep 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 um did i okay good i didn't i didn't cut the stream uh the action adventure parts are real they're really really real um because um well how could i put this the adventure isn't just hey oh wait look at all that yeah you can't you can't have that you can't you can't have that um um the action adventure parts that come up ooh yeah this is gonna suck give me just a sec there we go um the action adventure bits that are out there is them trying to survive against the elements okay so this whole episode was like 
family drama, family drama, family drama. And then I'm on a boat. Hey, hey, I'm on a boat. And then how being on a boat sucks. Um, you know, full disclosure, I've been on a tall ship before because of one of my most favorite exes. And yes, yeah, sailing a sailboat is not an easy job. <laughs> Just it, it, it ain't easy. And they showed up that a lot. And with um with the Dr. Smith character, okay? Um, she ends up saving the day primarily because um well how can I how can I put this? Um at the end of the day, it's a very Dr. Smith thing but she saves the family to try and show that um 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 to show that at the end of the day um you can't you can't fence her in you can't do any of that stuff and it got really really well how can i put it one of my friends and i cannot watch this show together because at the end of the day, the question of why haven't they killed her becomes very, very real. Um, that is one of the biggest thing. It's like, why is she still alive? Why haven't we killed her? <laughs> um, and it, it's that's just really one of the biggest things. It's like, I want to kill her. I don't know why I haven't killed her. But she's still alive and it hurts. Um, and that that is very much a real thing. So what do I give this? Well, I thought about this movie. I thought about it a lot. And um, honestly, so far, it's starting. It's starting off very well. Um... It's starting off very well and when I say very well I mean um, um, it's really starting off with it, it's going to a good start and I'm interested in seeing the, the next episode now when I had a co-host on here he would watch it from week to week and I would binge the whole season and we'd talk about the differences there. But since we're not, um, since I don't have a co-host for a little while, um, I'm only going to watch it week to week from right now. So episode one, it gets a solid three of a kind. And I mean a super duper solid three of a kind from, um, of course, our, our ratings and all that stuff, which, of course, I forgot to pull up. Um, oh, excuse me, excuse me. But yeah, um, this is a great start. And I mean a great start to um, a, a great start to the, I, I suppose you can say, the beginning of the beginning of the season. I'm very happy with how that has come out. Let me see if I can do this properly. Ah, nope. Okay. Oh, wait. Boom. And nope. Well, still a three of a kind. All right. So, yeah, it, it's a, it's still a solid three of a kind. And um, yeah, one of the things that I'm really happy about when it when it came to this is um, it made me look forward to seeing the next episode. So that was one of the really big things. Now, if you guys are noticing, I'm doing what I can. To um, do, do, do. oh wait, uh huh, maybe that. Oh, that might be the problem. Nope. And do 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 one two three. Nope. And. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, hang on. Ah, dude, what happened there? Oh, I know what happened there. That's off. Okay, so let's uh, take a look there. Hmm. All right. Well, 
Now, the next thing that we're going to talk about today is, of course, the Harley Quinn, um, the Harley Quinn TV show. Okay. Um, hang on, TV show. Boop, boop, boop. Not the movie. Not the not the new thing that's coming out. Um, no, we're talking. Um, we're talking the animated show because this show is what is the term i'm looking for um this show is surprising now i am going to put it out there right now i am not the biggest harley quinn fan okay um never really was i want it to be i tried to be i couldn't be. i was raised by an elite yeah, I couldn't be. Um, why couldn't I be? Because for reals, for reals, um, the more I tried to be a Harley Quinn fan, the more I didn't get it. And the more I tried to talk to people about Harley Quinn, the number one thing that I kept getting was the people I knew liked her because they could see themselves in her or she was a girl they were girls and that was where the conversation ended but in this one um i honestly got a bit of context and i was really really surprised i was very surprised at how much um at how much i enjoyed um you know how much i really enjoy the show so let's talk about it shall we now in the first episode um we get sort of the cartoon origin of the harley quinn uh character it's primary um primary big thing is her and her and the joker are doing the thing and they're fighting batman and then or they're robbing a boat and then batman comes along and harley's fighting and all that stuff and the joker throws her under the bus again makes um a getaway with a submarine and leaves harley to go to arkham to get captured by batman because that is what the joker do that's just the whole thing and um you know he did the whole i promise you won't spend more than a day in arkham asylum and make a long story short she's sitting in arkham waiting for a breakout and the joker doesn't come for a year and if you guys are thinking hey well did he come after that year no no he didn't he didn't come after that year it was terrible um yeah he really it, it was just no no he didn't come after that year um it turned out that ivy ended up being the one um to bail out Har uh to bail out Harley and they end up um moving in together <laughs> you know becoming friends while Harley tries to start her own superhero career or super villain career and um it's very very interesting in the sense of she becomes unknowingly well, let's face it. The premise of Harley has always been that girl that's with the wrong guy and everyone's telling her she's with the wrong guy. But over the course of this episode, she breaks it off with the Joker and stays off and decides to be her own person, which was one of my favorite parts of one of the Gotham games. And um, it doesn't mean that once she breaks it off with the Joker, everything is good. She needs to heal. And I like that. I like that a lot and the course of the show is harley trying to find her own two feet while ivy does her best to be that friend and y'all know who i'm talking about yeah y'all really know who i'm talking about that friend that's like dude um i'm trying to help i'm trying to give you that advice i'm trying to do all that stuff and yeah no no we don't listen they don't listen there's a whole lot of not listening going on um and this show has a very colorful cast of characters. Now, um, we get to meet in the first couple of episodes um, the beginnings of Harley's crew, and we'll talk about that as um, 
as we keep going throughout the episodes but i just want to focus on the first episode of course um yeah the what is the term the breaking up of um the breaking up of harley and the joker was very 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 serious on this now what led to it well it was simple um they essentially plan this heist um one thing leads to another and um she goes to confront the joker at you know this chemical factory and of course the joker captures harley and or the riddler the riddler captures harley and batman and then the joker comes in to take all the glory and be the joker because in this one alan tudyk is still worth every penny um so he charismatically tries to do the whole takeover thing and the riddler and um well the riddler captures harley and batman in one of the 1950s style death traps and makes the joker choose like who do you want to save your girlfriend or your arch enemy and of course the joker chose batman uh drops harley in a vat of acid and then joker the batman run off um run off and do the whole fighting thing off screen and harley gets pulled out of the vat of acid by ivy who set the whole thing up to show that the joker really didn't care and of course the riddler helped her out with this because he owed her a solid for breaking him out of arkham and um and that really opened harley's eyes to how the joker didn't really care so then came the confrontation where harley breaks up with the joker loses the mallet and gets um and gets um the baseball bat that we know her to have from the suicide squad so <clears throat> this episode was very well constructed i really do i i i honestly think that um that this show being so well constructed in the sense of you get a sense of not harley quinn the bad you know the really hardcore girl um that does a lot of stuff because she's a cool girl it's um it's harley quinn the jilted lover who really needs to realize the situation she's in and who really needs to understand that she can be who she wants to be you know and her evolution from the harley that came out in btas that's working for the joker to the harley that we know with the new outfit <clears throat> and all that jazz um it's a really 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 good transformation you know um but everything that she did in order to get to that point is huge i mean it, it's it's really a huge thing with a huge transitional period and the fact that at the time she's living with harley or she's living with um living with um poison ivy in her apartment um it's really cool to see the dynamic of a two friends and one of them is trying to get their heads together and failing miserably and another one is trying to help them but they make it very clear that she crazy <laughs> she's really crazy like really really crazy and um you know i got bad news for a lot of people this show does not pass the bechtel test okay um and it's not supposed to okay the harley character at this point in her development is still trying to get through the joker who is a textbook psychologically abusive and textbook physically abusive if we're being honest a significant other but i'm liking the show so far because it delves into a lot of that stuff and it shows that just because you get one toxic element out of your life that doesn't make everything magically better with harp music and a few sparkles you still got some stuff to work through you know now in the first episode like i said she comes to that conclusion 
And then it's a matter of, well, now that she's no longer the Joker's girlfriend, who is she? Who's she going to be? And how is she going to move forward? Um, there's a fantastic scene in the show where um, Ivy has to talk to um, to Harley about what she's actually doing and what she's actually going in into psychologically and she holds up a picture to solidify the origin of their relationship because dr harleen quinzel the psychiatrist was one of the only people to get through to ivy in in arkham so she's like dude you're my friend i'm there i give a crap about you because you showed you gave a crap about me now what would the you who is part of um you know um if you were, if you, the psychiatrist, was talking to me right now, what would you say to yourself? And she ended up having a very, very crazy conversation um, with her picture from when she was a psychiatrist. And um, that was big because even the better parts of herself were saying, dude, you're better than this. Um, in the, well, um, You'll, you'll have to watch the episode for yourself, but it essentially comes down to the picture of her as a psychiatrist asked, a, asked her for some help with a patient that she has that's totally obsessed with an abusive significant other and she can't get past a lot of the stuff that she needs to get past in order to grow as a person. And of course, Harley, the crazy person who at the time is being held upside down, um, essentially goes in and says you know oh well this person is like a textbook this textbook that oh you're talking about me <laughs> and so um so yeah that's really good and along the way along the course of the show and this is one that i have i don't binge it because it's a weekly show um comes on fridays on the dc streaming service so i watch it on fridays on the dc streaming service but all in all so far this show is getting a solid full house every episode it's weird it is weird and i can't say that i don't like it because i do i like it very very much um one thing about this show that i can't stress enough is that this is not a show for kids i love you guys i love you guys like barbecue ribs all right but this show makes it very clear from the beginning that it is not a pg-13 show it is not a pg show in fact this show really pushes the boundaries of rated r and i am not joking with that i mean it is is bad all right it is it is there is yelling there is cussing there is screaming um the show opens with four or five compound fractures and there is a lot of blood in this show a lot of blood um so yeah this is this is really a thing now occasionally they deal with issues of feminism and all that stuff and we'll get to that as the episodes go by but as far as the first episode is concerned i highly recommend calling up a friend that has the dc universe and checking this show out um if you're over 17 because if not yeah this is not a show that you need to be watching i can say that right there not with the blood not with the guts not with the sexual content um this is not parental approved for children it is parentally approved for parents all right so you know little boys and girls out there this show ain't for you this is for your parents you know you guys can watch superhero girls all day um i'm thinking in the future, I will probably um, cover Marvel Rising because I really like that show. Um, really, really like that, that show. As you guys know, we're here not just for me, but for, you know, people of color, women, LGBT, um, the disabled, the fiscally disenfranchised. Just if you're disenfranchised, that's what we're here for. And the show Marvel Rising I'm really thinking about covering. It's very much a girl Avenger show um, with Miss Marvel at the helm, and it is awesome. Okay, it is really awesome. Why would I think about covering that? Because I will let you guys know. This show, Buster Recap, I love trying to stay relevant. Okay, 
but right now the world is on fire okay? and you know in order to stay relevant I would have to talk about a whole bunch of stuff that just makes me not want to get up in the morning so what are we doing on the show I'm covering the stuff that makes me smile and I think it'll make you smile too you know I felt uh, it's a little bit of escapism not gonna lie and there's a place for that as well I felt really good and I mean really good um, watching Harley Quinn it's a fun show um, it is bizarre it is quirky it is funny as all get out with voice talents of um god you got so many number one my man Alan Tudyk um, you guys know him as Wash from Firefly Tucker from Tucker and Dale versus the evil um, you know and of course Mr. Nobody from the Doom Patrol um, however um, Harley in and of herself is played by the wonderful um, Kaylee Kaku or Kaku um, you guys know her from the show that we are never covering on this show ever 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 the Big Bang Theory and why are we not covering it because I don't like that show I don't like the characters on it and I don't like that it makes fun of nerds um, I like watching nerds so I'll watch community that's right are these the thoughts of back in the deck as a company no but as long as I'm the executive producer of this show we're not covering um we're not covering that unless we get another ace patreon that goes oh please cover the big bang theory and in which case that's fine so if y'all are willing to pay me a hundred bucks a month to do that i'll do it but until then the answer is no not nine yet nada um however kaylee um Kauku, one of the very talented people from the show that i dislike um honestly is one of the better actresses that i've seen or heard rather play Harley Quinn she is a very very good actress um, and she has just enough crazy and just enough sympathy to really make Harley a compelling character and she pulls off that flavor of crazy that makes you laugh wondering what she gonna do next you know and I, I really appreciate that that is some stuff that I can get down with um, you know, I was having a talk with my sister um, about Harley because my sister is really into Harley and I'm not. And she was saying the chick from um, Always Sunny in Philadelphia would make a great Harley Quinn. I ain't going to deny that. But um, but Kaylee is doing a really good job. Um, the writers on the show are on point. Like I said, Alan Tudyk, you whatever he charges you for anything that he is in, just pay him just pay him and say thank you um we've got lake bell as poison ivy uh you guys might know lake bell from um from so many different shows um let me see if i can pull up one that everybody would know and not just from one of my um one of my various various um um deep cut things um wet hot american summer 10 years later um wet hot american summer um in a world black rock you know how to make it in america so she's really good and lake bell oh boston legal that's right thank you thank you chanson thank you very very much you know what i haven't done uh this episode and i'm sorry about that i haven't said what's up to the guys in np city hey hey guys thank you for the chat and yeah lake bell from boston legal um again plays poison ivy and their dynamic is very much um a crazy person and a cast from and a cast member from daria either daria and jane um my friends and i call the harley quinn cartoon a wonderful marriage between archer and the venture brothers and um i'm a big fan of both of those properties um we've also got jb smooth playing frank um ivy's main plant and he's the dude that pops up and he's the peanut gallery for all the sarcastic comments and of course we've got king shark in the show um and king shark is the dude that points out all of the plot contrivances um so that we don't have to and i am a real fan 
of characters. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not expecting perfect writing. So I'm not going to sit up here going, well, just because you pointed out doesn't make it okay. You know what? I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. Um, you know, if you guys start watching the show when the other cast members show up, you'll start saying, you know what? Yeah, that's exactly what they're there for. And they're not going for high art. They're not going for an Emmy. Um, the tone of this first episode made it very clear that they wanted to make a show that people would enjoy watching and a show that they would enjoy making. And they really pull that off. So it gets a full house and I have no qualms about that one. Um, so yeah, that's it. Check it out. Have fun with it. If you don't have the DC subscription service, I recommend getting it. Um, I haven't logged on to Disney Plus yet because, well, how can I put it? Um, let's talk about some streaming services, okay? Um, between Hulu, Shutter, BritBox, Amazon, CBS All Access, HBO, Cinemax, soon HBO Max, um, what else? Um, Netflix um what other services the dc streaming services the marvel comic book service soon disney plus you know that's 11 different streaming services and i adore having this much choice but oh yeah and crackle yeah crackle crack lacking crack lacking and i don't even want to start when it comes to all the free channels you get if you have roku you know, that's a lot of stuff to cover. This is one of the reasons that we tend to only cover one or two shows on this show. Like I said, am, you know, I may eventually cover The Mandalorian. That's all up to my patrons. If they want to throw me that stuff out there, I can do it. Oh, man, dude, we got the we got NP City going out there going, yeah, Hulu, Crackle, Crunchyroll. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we there are. 40, 50 streaming services where you're essentially paying for the exact type of content that you want, which is what everybody in my generation, Generation X, wanted when it came to cable. Okay, we have it all, but we're also paying for it. And between um, all of the services that I listed, except for Disney Plus, are services that I already pay for. <laughs> already. And a lot of people are like, well, dump Netflix. They don't have anything good. I disagree. There's something good on every single one of these things. Um, I'm a big fan of Shudder because I love the horror movies, especially the ones from the 70s and the 80s. You know, the 80s was the high point of the slasher. The 70s was the high point of the supernatural suspense film. So I'm all down for all that stuff. So there's a lot of stuff that I could cover. Um, now, here's the thing. Um, Lost in Space season two only has, um, like 10 or 11 episodes, so we can cover those. But if you guys have any suggestions, just head on over to the Patreon. Um, and if you sign up for five bucks a month, you guys can throw your suggestions into the hat. And I'm letting you guys know right now, those are the ones that I consider because I have to, I must make time to try and make shows that don't have as many screw-ups as today's episode had. So I'm, I'm trying here, all right? But um, we are almost out of time. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to talk about as well when it comes to entertainment, um, with all of these streaming services, it's real easy to get lost. Uh, when I was growing up, they called it nickel and diamond. You know, five dollars here, four dollars there, seven dollars here, six dollars there. Next thing you know, you're paying two hundred dollars a month for all these different things. Um, <clears throat> on the docket for this year, we are going to cover Picard um, from CBS All Access because you know we're Trekkies and we just we don't just cover comics and RPGs on this channel. So yeah, if you're not if you're not catching it, we are into the sci-fi. Will we go anime? Maybe in the future when I have more writers. Okay, um, but with all the different streaming services that there are out there, it's really hard to get confused. It's hard not to get confused. Here is the thing: every show I want to have just a little bit of a you see, Timmy, just a little bit. Um, in my spare time, I've been watching Blackish, and I love the lessons that that show. Um, give. So I'm just trying to share uh, a couple with you. 
Don't worry about staying relevant. Stop it. Okay? Because everything that's relevant changes so fast. I'm going to do what I like. Okay? I'm going to watch the shows that I like to watch and the ones that I'm interested in. And you guys are going to get my real opinions. My real opinions and my real summaries. Um, Not quite reaction videos, but close. Um, nobody is paying me. I'm not getting a handout from Fox or Netflix or Amazon or Hulu. I don't get letters saying, please give my thing a good review. I ain't that guy. So everything that you see, well, number one, everything that comes on this show, I feel strongly about. Now that don't mean I like, it means I feel strongly about. <laughs> okay. Um, the definition of that is very simple. I either really like it. I really think you guys would like it or I hate it with the burning fire of a thousand suns and I think you guys will hate it like the burning fire of a thousand suns and I want to have a real discussion about this whole thing because nothing I do is ever in bad faith all right so um, I'm actually checking out uh, I've got to check my notes here because older people keep notes that's just how we roll you know yeah we're older people hey look at all that that's right along with my notes I got the bad news, and I mean the bad, bad news of saying, I'm so glad we have this time together because we are out of time. I'm trying to keep my shows down to an hour instead of 90 minutes, but we'll see how all that goes. It's good to be back. Thank you guys for showing up to um, yet another very fun and very cool episode. This is our first one back, so just bear with us. But thank you guys for showing up for another episode of Buster Recap. I have really enjoyed you guys being here. I really have. And if you guys want, and I mean that, if you guys want to talk with us and all that stuff, well, I'm going to let you guys know quite a few things. Like, um, let's say you are on what I call that wretched hive of scum and villainy. Okay, I am... I, I get it. I get it because, you know, that wretched hive of scum and villainy that we call Facebook. Yeah, Facebook. Well, we have a group there. And that group, for all you guys, is called the Deckers on the Book. So head on over to Deckers on the Book. Um, sign up there. Do the thing. And come on in, join us for conversations. Um, we got like 137 people there. <laughs> you know, so it's not like you're going to be screaming into the wind. Just, you know, hey guys, what's going on? I'm doing thing and all that other stuff. Uh, talk to us there. And um, if you guys are just now joining us, I really appreciate it. I really do. Unfortunately, we're out of time. We are so out of time. Um, but if you guys will, um, if you guys will bear with me and all that. And what is happening? Okay. Yeah, no, no, I'm still good. Um, if you guys will bear with me, that would be great. Um, and pull up a keyboard and type in back in the deck at gmail.com. That's B-A-C-K-I-N-T-H-E-D-E-C-K. That's B-A-C-K-I-N-T-H-E-D-E-C-K at uh, gmail.com. Head on over to our YouTube channel, you know, subscribe, hit the like button. You know, I put up, um, or at least I'm working on putting up just a few, um, a few clips, you know, just, you know, summations and little bitty parts where I can talk to you guys about a few stuff. Um, join Deckers on the book. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. If you guys don't like looking at this face, I get it. You know, I get a lot of people saying, well, I would watch your show, but it's just a talking head. And blah, 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 blah. That's fine. Uh, I can live with that. You know why? Because um, it's me talking with you guys as best as I can. If you guys like that, head on over to soundcloud.com slash BID underscore P. And you guys can listen to the audio of our shows um, dating back seven years. Seven years where we talk about TV and games and... Um, you guys get to listen to some of the role-playing games that I've run online and you know we got playlists and all that stuff and guess what just because I love you guys as much as I love you guys you can download that stuff for free and keep it forever 
And I mean that. You can keep it for free, forever, for all of that stuff, just for heading down there and helping us out on that particular front. And of course, if you really want to help us out um, and you got a few extra cents a day, that would be kind of cool. You know, the liking, the sharing, the subscribing, the bringing people to the live cast, all that stuff is awesome. Um, just head on over to patreon.com slash bid underscore p um join up our tiers and you guys can communicate with me directly you know at the 20 dollars tier i teach you guys a game you know i literally go to where you are if you're in the southern california area or at least hook up with you on zoom or skype or facebook messenger and we crack the rules to a game so that i can teach you guys how to play like you know christmas just passed and you want you probably got a board game or a card game or something of that manner. So come on over, check that out. And um, again, just have fun with your games, have fun with your shows. Next week, we'll be covering episodes two of both Harley Quinn season one and Lost in Space season two. But until then, um, join us tomorrow for Dark Side of the Room, which is our deep, deep philosophical discussions about how gaming can affect your life. But until then, if anybody tells you that you can't like what you like because of the circumstances of your birth, be it race, religion, creed, gender identity, sexual orientation, disability, or your budget, you just tell them that we said to take those cards and put them back in the deck. This is Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer, saying thank you guys, and we'll see you next week on Buster Recap.